No, oh, there we go. Yep. That was what you. That was what we wanted. Floor's in. There. We're we're gonna go home now. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> There we go. Okay. All right, we've got our C10 cab delivered across town. We're at No Coast Custom and Rod Shop. And our friend Ben here runs the shop, and he's also kind of a maestro when it comes to sheet metal work and knows these C10 trucks pretty well. So he's gonna kind of show us the right way to do this. We know we need a floor. We've got to kind of walk around and figure out what other patches we need. We know there are going to be quite a few of them. You know, I think it's about average for what we see around here. Um, there's yeah. some rust, but nothing that can't be repaired. So obviously the floor needs to be replaced, the rockers. Yep. Uh, what else do you see, Ben? Cab corners. Um, there's usually these on the pillars. There's a lower section in there. Those are typically always rotted. Obviously we're doing a full floor, so that'll come with the braces and everything. You know, there, we sell those sections of floor and sections of the inner rocker and stuff, but we elected to just do the whole deal. The cab mount brackets are included, all the bracing is included. There's yep. always hidden damage too when you start, start taking everything apart. Right. You know, when right. you peel all the braces off and everything, there's more rust than you ever think there will be. So what's the very first thing we need to do here? Uh, what I like to do is I'll take some preliminary measurements, door frames and that kind of stuff. Um, just give myself a couple points that we're going to measure. Mm -hmm. uh, it just helps later on down the road to reference. Right. Um, other than that, we'll start bracing this thing up. And I like to pick spots that are not going to be too much in our way. Mm -hmm. there, there are going to be times where we got to cut a brace and right. re-weld it. But, uh, so we'll just try and pick some spots that are not too much in the way and they won't need to be cut out. And we, we gotta brace it because when we cut the floor out, oh, you know, yeah. the whole There's thing is gonna do this. Yeah, all the structure and everything is, you know, it's gonna be out of this truck, so we wanna brace it up. We usually use one by one. Mm -hmm. It's fairly small and strong, so. And then we get to hit our heads on that for, yep. for the next month, okay. These are the body mount right. nuts, which are probably crusty anyway, so. We can cut those off of there and then remove them from the back side of the cab too. Pull the, this apart and just weld it back onto the floor. Do you want to work on that? It, do, would you rather grind spot welds or make door braces? I, I don't have any preference. You have to. Where do you, where do you, what do you want to do? I mean, I don't want to grind spot welds, but I will. <laughs> you can start making those plates if you want to. I Measure guess, once I and like cut twice, say, right? Not sorry, not sorry. No, I'm saying the way that I do it. <laughs> Scrap one piece of metal and, and get another one. Now I just gotta drill some holes in it. Smoking. Bigger hole. We're not done yet. Let's take our measurements now before we even brace it up. We were measuring this so that we know when we weld it all back together that it didn't like move on us. You know, even though we're bracing it all up, we're taking a lot of support out of it when we cut the floor out. And so we're just measuring it to be on the safe side to make sure we put everything back where it goes. This is delicate because you don't want to grind a hole in the back of the cab. So you just have to wait until you just start to kind of See where the two pieces are starting to separate. Do you have a hammer? Like that? Yeah, like that. Thanks. Are you using it? Well, there's a whole cart full of hammers. If you'd like to select a different one, it's okay. We'll just share. We'll just share a hammer. Here in the here in the fabrication shop, we'll just share the one hammer that we have access to. Well, between the body shop, the fab shop, the paint shop, the office, we only have one hammer. That's what you want. Go here to here and there to there yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that would keep this thing really braced up. 
it's so valuable to do this. So I never understood the value of it, but now I do. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the alternative is you weld, you go through all of this work and weld your floor back in and then your doors never close or the gaps are all wonky and you can't figure out why. It's because the whole cab moved three quarters of an inch, you know. What is our order of operations here? So yeah, I think once we get most of this kind of out and cut, then we can kind of do a little spot blasting, but mm -hmm. definitely before we um, go like get everything in epoxy, I think we blast the entire cab, but for now we'll just kind of spot blast where we need, so. And you're, and you're thinking we blast it before we put the floor back in? I think right? so, yeah. We, what I typically will do is blast and then um, kind of see what's going on and then epoxy it and then weld it back together with the epoxy behind, so. I'm gonna have to get in there to do the center, to do the middle. You pop in through the transmission tunnel. You could just cut the center of it out if you want and then stand in the center. Would that be helpful? <laughs> There's lots of places here that aren't obviously like conductive anymore. Yeah. I might need like an actual cutoff wheel to kind of finish it all out. This back here is super, like that's what I'm trying to figure out how to get right now. You want the Sawzall? Maybe, yeah. I'll go see if I can track it down. There's some spots over here that need to be cut still. There we go. Hold on, hold on, dude. Hung up. All right, the floor is out. We plasma cut and sawzalled and blasted the big piece of the floor out. And so now the tedious and time consuming part of kind of removing these rough edges around everything uh, is what we're, what we're doing. So we're grinding through all the spot welds and pulling these, these rough flanges off. Um, on the floor here, on this side, we've already removed the pieces of this brace and the pieces of the toe panel that we're not using. Um, this side we have yet to do, and then we'll be ready to move on to inner and outer rockers, cutting those out and one step closer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I wasn't under it. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you from experience it was not pleasant. No wonder they're rusty. How's that? The front pillar piece I want to leave on there so mm -hmm. we have an idea of where it was and we can kind of use those factory bolt holes to locate okay. it. Because we've got to replace the, bo the bottom part of the sill, yep. the kick and the rocker. Yeah, so all of that, that whole corner. The back, there's nothing left of yeah. it, so we're just going to have to kind of figure that out. There's no sheet metal left on it. How is it still holding pockets of dirt? <laughs> every, every time. I know. Like pretty soon there's going to be nothing left and it's, still, it's just going to be a pile of dirt. All right, we're back. Our truck looks a little different now. Uh, it's been blasted, um, you know, and exposed even more gnarly areas than we, than we knew of before. And uh, Ben has sprayed it with an epoxy primer. So now our next step is to start putting all the fresh metal back in. So we need to figure out where to even start. I mean, it needs everything from, you know, here down. In this situation, I think we start with our lower pillar patches okay. and then since we kind of have some bolts here to locate them, we can get those placed and then we're, I think we put the floor in from okay. there and start working our way out. We do those on both sides and then, yep. and then put the floor in. Yeah. 
what we'll do is we'll unbolt them. We'll kind of get a loose fit. Mm -hmm. And then once we are happy with where, where we're fitting, we can mark our holes, drill those. Okay. So I think we'll just get a couple marks on there mm -hmm. and kind of rough mark them. This one, the rust, it kind of goes up in front of where that cage nut is, so we're going to want to put a little step in it. I mean, we're just doing making a rough cut. Yeah, now, just right? making a rough cut. Hmm, that's not good. You see that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and blast and you can blast, but the mouse nest remains. <laughs> Everything lines up good, so I'm gonna unbolt mine again. I'm gonna make a, I'll probably trim that off so I can see my mark over there. But I'm gonna mark the cab mm -hmm. where I want the cut to be and just to where I can see it and then I'll just run a straight line on the other piece. So I'm just scribing it so I have a good line to go off of instead of my five Sharpie lines. That'll get cut off the truck. This will get welded on. Then there should be a little spot weld. Is that holding the... Yeah, it holds that little tab. I didn't think it was gonna fight me, but it did, so I would just grind that off first. Okay. Where are we going? Go, there you go. <laughs> this is how I lose my head. <laughs> All right, hold on, let me move. No, I think we're just gonna have to trim those. And I remember having to do that the last time now. And this was the exact reason. The floor is just too big, so geometrically we have to cut these braces that we've welded to the back of the cab that are just temporary braces. We're just going to cut those out so we can hold up the back of the cab with a lift and then slide the floor back and then slide it up over these pieces rather than cutting those pieces out and then having to try to like weld them back in and blend them and make them look like they belong. This is what it's hanging up on. Here you go, push. Push, there we go. Okay, now what are we stuck on? Everything else? I found the problem. It's in a great location. <laughs> there we go. Such a satisfying feeling. If you can convey that to the viewer, the feeling of a good hand punch, punching through sheet metal is, there's nothing better. No, oh, there we go. Yep. That was what you, that was what we wanted. Just the geometry of trying to shimmy it in there is hard, but yeah, cutting these braces out of the back allowed us to go back and then up rather than cutting these braces here and then trying to weld them and grind them and, and making them look like we never cut them. It's sort of solid again. Cut out a lot of work, really, when you think about it. I mean, yeah, like in, in 
an hour and a half. This thing went from like kind of scary disaster to like, hey, it's a truck again. <laughs> Doing this whole floor thing, it saved you know hours and days of cutting and welding and stitching you know cab mount brackets in and stuff. It's starting to look like a truck again. You know, there's still bad parts of it that we'll have to take care of, but having that big piece in place and being able to look inside and see a floor and not your feet, that's a big deal. All right, since we got the floor tacked in, our next move is gonna be to fit the doors and actually start fitting the rockers in the cab corners. We did take some time and fill in with the floor tacked in. Uh, you know, there was some strips missing here, there was a piece missing here. Uh, and we've, we've done a little bit of work on the cowl, filled in places where there were some little pinholes and things like that, put in some fresh metal. So now we're ready to move on and actually get the cab corners and rockers and finish out this cab. <laughs> he does yoga. And there are a few things in the world that I'm good at. That's one of them. This is exciting. We're going to pull all of this jungle gym that we welded in here to hold the cab together when we cut the floor out. And now the floor's in. And so before we can fit the doors, obviously, we got to pull this out. But it's kind of exciting, you know, to get all the bracing and crap that we've been crawling over out of here. It's going to come off as an assembly. The question is, will it come out of there like that? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm going to say no. No. <laughs> no is the answer to that one. Yeah, look at that. Get in there and yeah, and drive it. Yeah. I haven't been able to do that since it actually had a floor to sit on. All right. Now what? Doors? The old doors were pretty hammered. The, they were dented and the guts of looking in the bottoms were rusty. So we sell these door shells that just show up complete. So we're just going to zip the hinges off the old doors and bolt these on and then uh, be ready for body work. Hang on, come off. Let's go out with the back a little bit. I'm trying to hold this something like where it's supposed to be, yeah. but it's kind of hard to do, but you're, you got it tight? It's not tight. I think my ratchet's inside there. Uh, I don't see it. I see an extension. Oh, it's in my pocket. Okay, that'll hold it. It's not great, but... That actually don't fit bad. But, I mean... I mean, it needs some adjustment, but it ain't bad. It looks, it's a maybe little a high. Maybe a little high. Yeah, it's just... Yep. Pretty good, yeah. just hitting the floor. Yeah. And I mean, it's not, yeah, like it's, it's, seems like it's, a quarter, a quarter inch of interference consistently I mean, across the whole bottom of the door. I mean, we could come up, because when it's up on there, it lines the lines up. Yeah. So we could come up, and that okay. would tighten that up. Hey, yeah. shut me. Wow. Look at that. I think the gaps are pretty good. They're within factory spec, for sure. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Ready to fit some sheet metal now? Yeah. Overall, I think we're looking pretty good. Let's look at the, the inside, see how that's fitting. Yeah, the front's got a little gap too. I think if we do a little uh, hammer and chisel yeah. action, we'll be able to get that to fit. Is anybody left-handed? Do you want me to do it from out here? <laughs> Hard to believe that we went with this thing from the point where you couldn't look at it without getting a tetanus shot, so now we're actually like gapping it. Right. It, like it seems like it doesn't deserve that. Like it, <laughs> it's just not good enough to be gapped with a tool.
the rocker where it meets the door jams, we're gonna rosette weld, and it doesn't come with any holes in it, so we need to punch the holes. So we could probably get the front tack yep. and then do the We'll shut tack. the door. I think we're okay. What we had to do is kind of hammer around and move some metal just to get the rocker to fit where we were happy. Uh, like Joe said, the aftermarket sheet metal doesn't fit exact. Um, so you kind of got to manipulate it here and there just to get back to where, uh, where the OEM would have sat. It's a normal process and it doesn't really matter brand to brand. I mean, some are better than others, but for the most part, they all fit about the same. So you're going to have to do that on any rocker or cab corner that you purchase. So. All right, with the rocker tacked in place, we're ready to move on to the cab corner. We also noticed there's a, a dent here, and before we can start fitting this cab corner, we're gonna need to, to massage that out. Yeah, so the dent is out now. We can... Uh clean some of this epoxy off, and that way we can get a nice scribe mark where we're gonna cut this. We'll be somewhere uh -huh. in there. Do we come around? Yeah, I think we right just here. come straight. So I would actually come up a little bit further okay. because what I wanna do is I'll show the Oh, tab. yeah, okay. So. Just, do you just want to do that on this side or do you want to do that all the way around? I would do it all the way around. So we've got the cab corner fitting where we want. So now we're gonna pull this off and uh, we're gonna trim off a little bit of the excess to use these as tabs to hold this in place while we make our cut. So I mean, here's where like the beauty of the leaving the tabs is, you know, normally here you have like magnets or vice grips or something trying to hold everything flush, but this way it's kind of holds itself flush with the tabs and the Clicos. You trim the tabs off as you go and that's what's holding it in place and then uh, we'll get a nice flush fit that way. Now that we've got this kind of tacked in and fit in the way that we want it to, just as kind of a general note, you know, on the video, this might all look like it kind of fell together, but, you know, we, we really kind of took our time to fit this the way that we wanted it to fit. So we got this all welded up now. Uh, we stitch welded it, which basically means that you take it and tack every so often and follow that around. We worked from one side of the panel over. And the reason why we do that is because we wanna keep our heat down so we don't warp this panel. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the other panel. So, I mean, I, I know what you're thinking is, while you've been watching us do this, is that this piece here is all hammered and why didn't we just 
you know, put it all in one piece. And just sort of the, with the way that this was fitting, it was gonna work easier for us to do this in two pieces. So now this, whatever happened here, this got torched out years ago. We've got this other piece from the cab corner that we're gonna fit. So while Ben's dressing the weld down, I'm gonna start working on fitting this piece. Usually what I do is like I'll tack it, mm -hmm. cut it, tack it, tack it, tack it, cut around. it, tack it, okay. and then I work my way around. Yeah. I'm okay with yours being better than mine. My ego is still intact. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's not done. You know, we'll pick on it a little bit more and do a little bit more hammer and dolly work and yeah. things like that. And you know, that's kind of a big deal, right? Like having a cab that's not full of rust. Like if you have a nice cab, you kind of have a nice truck. <laughs>